Cubs have had plenty of cheer about this season so far. After 10 games, the Panthers have won nine of them with big time contributions from a number of players. Tonight in the Steel City, Bethune Cookman is here. Welcome to Holiday Hoops on ESPN3, presented by All States. Tonight, we're at the Pete Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh as Pitt hosts the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman in non-conference action. Hi again, everybody, along with former South Carolina coach Darren Horton. I'm Tim Never. Glad you're watching college basketball with us tonight. Bethune Cookman, a little bit shorthanded, making their way here from Daytona Beach. Meantime, the Panthers hope to keep their non conference winning streak on this floor line. Well, Pittsburgh's been terrific at home, and Bethune Cookman's going to have their hands full tonight as Pittsburgh tries to impose their will on them with that outstanding Pittsburgh defense and rebounding. Keep an eye on two players, our one on one, featuring the Panthers' Trey Woodall. He is the Panthers' top scorer. He also leads the team in assists and steals. Trey Woodall is an absolute coach's dream because he's efficient. He brings all positives and does very few things that hurt your basketball team. He does a great job of scoring the ball in a variety of ways, and lately he's been shooting the ball at a high rate from beyond the arc, Tim. His greatest strength, though, the poise and confidence he brings to Panthers every night. For Bethune Cookman, Adrian Coleman. He's been bitten by a little bug. There's some sickness going around the Wildcat team, but he's going to have to get it done for them. And they're going to need him. He's a throwback. He's got what I call old school game, Tim. He does all his scoring, 18.8 points a game from inside the arc. Only one three-pointer made on the season. Darrell Craig in his second year. He's out of Cleveland State. 22 and 24 is his record at Bethune Cookman. He's from nearby Farrell, Pennsylvania. About 45 minutes north of here, and Jamie Dixon in his 10th year as the head coach, 14th year at Pittsburgh, he is taking this program to eight straight NCAA tournaments from 2004 to 2011. Bethune Cookman will line up this way. Coleman, along with Kevin Dukes, watch for those guys to be the scorers. Paul Scotland, the senior guard. Javoris Bryant and Alex Smith will be the post players. For Pittsburgh, Woodall and the freshman, James Robinson, Lamar Patterson, junior playmaker, Talib Zana, and the freshman, Stephen Adams, are the men down low. The officials for the game tonight, Earl Walton, Paul Fea, and Wally Utecki. And we are just about ready to go. Pittsburgh in white, Bethune Cookman with the black uniforms. Trimmed in maroon and gold. And Adams, the seven-footer out of New Zealand, leaves the Panthers out for a 12-game home winning streak. They're 171 and 19 all time in this building. They had a great home court advantage. Zana's got the ball off to Robinson. Underway at the Peterson Event Center. Zone defense, a 2-3 being applied quickly. We thought we might see some more zone tonight, Darren, as Bethune Cookman wants to have Pittsburgh shoot over the zone rather than let the big guys beat him inside. Well, whether it's zone or man-to-man, -to -man, Tim, looks for him to try to pack it in tight and force those perimeter jump shots. Well, Robinson inside, Zana, the quick turnaround is 2 0 Pittsburgh. Leaves Zana left uncovered, and he scores the first basket of the game. Kevin Dukes, he's out of Georgia, senior, 5'9", point guard, lots of experience for this Bethune Cookman team. And Adrian Coleman, a junior, also from Stone Mountain right near Atlanta. They get the switch up, Adams out on him. Hand off by Alex Smith. And with it is Javoris Bryant. Shot clock down to five, pick with the steal. Woodall got the pass from Patterson. No! Look to Zana! Put the alley of slam! Uh, one of the big improvements in Jamie Dixon's team this year is scoring in transition off of steals. Live ball turnovers are going to be an issue for the Bethune Cookman because Pittsburgh turns them into baskets. Leave Zana off to a good start. He's got all four points in the game. Tenacious defense in the early going by Pittsburgh. 
The first shot by the Bethune Cookman is good. Javoris Bryant, six senior out of Atlanta with a basket. Bethune Cookman wants to take time off the clock, slow the tempo of the game, but if they do that, they're going to end up with a lot of one on one plays and late clock situations. That one went down for them. Donna draws a crowd. Patterson left wing. Trying to find Adams, but a foul is called. First foul of the game will be whistled against Bethune Cookman's Alex Smith. He's a 6 7 senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. And keep in mind, the last opponent that was in here, we talked to Gravel Craig about this. But are you aware that the last opponent, North Florida, did not only not make a free throw in the game against Pitt, but they didn't attempt one? Unheard of. Free ball on the way. Paul Scotland knocks it down. Paul Scotland's a, a threat from the outside. He's been shooting the ball well in the last few games for the Wildcats. And uh, Gravel talked about before the game, Coach Craig, going to be important to make some perimeter shots early. Ball knocked out of bounds by Coleman, and Pitt will have it. 27 seconds on the shot clock. Green Cookman with their first lead of the game. Just underway at the Peterson Event Center. The 12 straight wins at home for Pitt. The third longest streak in program history. We go back to last year, and they lost at home to Long Beach State in a non-conference game, and it raised some eyebrows, but things have been much different around here this year. Adams throws it up and is fouled on the way up. Another foul drawn. And this one will be against Adrian Coleman, his first team second. Two shot fakes on the Panthers in that possession led to the post feed and the foul for Adams. So Adams will go to the line. Adams had 14 rebounds against Duquesne in the city game a couple of Wednesdays ago. That was a career high for him. 98 and 3, the record for Pitt against non conference opponents. On their home floor. That's an absolutely absurd number, Tim. 97% against non conference opponents speaks to consistency from Jamie Dixon's program. Well, it certainly keeps the home fans happy. They pretty much know they're going to see a win when they come out. Straight away jumper short and it's stuck. So that'll be treated as a held ball when it gets pinned up against the rim like that. They'll reset the shot clock, the possession arrow favoring Bethune Cookman so they'll have possession. The fadeaway jumper result of the length by Zona. One of the things that Bethune Cookman's really going to have to deal with tonight is the length especially on the perimeter from Pittsburgh. Scotland pass out to the point guard Dukes. Kevin Dukes trying to dribble around the seven footer Adams now throws one up over Robinson. Missed it and Adams has the rebound. Robinson one hand pass to Woodall. Bullet pass back to Robinson. Open look at a jumper, and that is no good. Adams flying in there for the rebound, the putback, the foul, and a possible three-point block. Stephen Adams is an elite athlete for his size, Tim, and can be one of the best offensive rebounding big men in the country. Well, picks go the basketball as Adams tracks that one down. Turn into a four point play with an exclamation point. Wow. Well, one of the things that uh, Stephen Adams has to improve on is scoring around the basket, but that's with his back to the basket, Tim. He knows what to do with those. Now, you want your guys to hit free throws, but if you can get the offensive rebound and turn it into two, it's actually a better deal. Scotland, a long three. Rebound to lead Zana. Pushing the tempo is Robinson. Not to let the Boone Pippen get set up in the zone. Skip pass to Woodall. Too much on it. And that ball will go back to Bethune Cookman. That's a rare force pass from Pittsburgh, especially a veteran like Lamar Patterson. You don't see those kind of mistakes uh, from Pittsburgh very often. Tremendous assist turnover ratio as a team. Talk to Gravel Craig about the fabled Farrell High School basketball program. He said attendance is way down from what it used to be when he was there. It used to be a quad A school, which is the highest designation. I think they're now single A, which is the lowest designation due to a lack of population there, but used to be very, very good. And times have changed a little bit in Farrell. Robinson to Adams. He's had a good start to this game on the glass. 
You think this could be a good matchup type game for Adams. Patterson misses a three, and Adams kept it alive, but knocked it out of bounds. Want to go back to Bethune Cookman. We'll take a timeout. 15-28 remaining in the first 10-5 bit. And freshman Steven Adams has been a factor in the early going. Prior to the national anthem tonight here at the Peterson Event Center, a moment of silence in recognition of the victims, the survivors, and the relatives of the tragic elementary school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. Ten five, Pittsburgh, fifteen twenty eight remaining with South Carolina's former coach and former. Western Kentucky coach Darren Horn. I'm Tim Neverett. So far, Stephen Adams has shown up inside. Well, as we've talked about before, an elite athlete for his size. He's a guy that can finish around the basket uh, when he's facing it. Still working on developing moves to finish with his back to the basket. But as an offensive rebounder and a finisher uh, at the end of the break and on dribble penetration, he's outstanding. Six points and four rebounds to the first media timeout. That's a pretty good start. That's healthy. <laughs> That's an excellent start. And it's why they're on pace to uh, put up 100 so far. You like those on pace numbers? Especially after the first timeout. It's a it's a game of runs. <laughs> it's a game of runs, Tim. It is. Well, they are not sure how good Stephen Adams could be. The high school situation that he was in, really, there was no high school program. He was playing uh, you know, club ball. So the competition, not necessarily the best all the time, but again, you, as you mentioned earlier, you can't teach height and you can't teach athletic ability. He's got both. Good job by Mathieu Cookman right there, getting in the paint. They're going to have to get reversals. They're going to have to get the basketball in the paint. Uh, if they want an opportunity to get to the foul line and get some easy baskets against Pitt. Adams committing his first personal as he got a piece of Alex Smith. Smith, a very good shooter. He leads the MIAC in field goal percentage. 73% of the time he'll knock down a, a field goal from the uh, outside, but as far as free throws, pretty good there at one point. At 44% knows he needs to improve that. And what's amazing is when you see guys with great field goal percentages and not so good free throw percentages. Well, that tells you he's getting a lot of finishes at the basket like the attempt we just saw. Three-point lead for Pitt. The film Cookman canceled their shoot around earlier today because two of the ten players they have with them were sick, Coleman included. The other is Paul Scotland. And Lavelle Craig told us he's coming down with it also. Sam Patterson will not be fouled in the act of shooting, fouled on the floor. And Alex Smith will pick up his second personal foul. Smith will come out substitutions as Malik Jackson will come in to replace him. Also in is Ricky Johnson. Out of Akron, Ohio. And 
Johnson guarding Cam Wright. He's off the pit bench. Woodall for three. He's got it. Smooth release for Trey Woodall. We talked about in the opener. Very efficient. Nice step in, ready to shoot three. You know, it's not just if you're open, Tim. It's if you're ready. Trey Woodall did a great job of shot preparation right there. Shot by Adams right off the bench. Rather, Jackson, beg your pardon. Malik Jackson, 6'6", junior, out of Central Islip in New York. It's a 13-10 game in favor of Pitt. Wright steps down the middle, changes hands and scores. Basket by Cam Wright. You know, so far the zone for Bethune Cookman is, is accomplishing one part that Gravel Craig wants. To, it's slowing tempo. It's making Pittsburgh make some passes, take time off the clock. But you still got to stop dribble penetration. They've given up two shots uh, at the rim in the last three possessions. Patterson, a little wraparound to Wright. And a held ball situation. It was tied up by Malik Jackson and Cam Wright. The possession arrow favoring Pittsburgh. So the Panthers will have it. And will inbound on the baseline. Even Adams checks out of the game. Checking in is Dante Taylor. Five point lead for Pitt. And now Brandon Stewart will come in. He's a sophomore out of Miami, Florida. A walk-on. Boone Cookman using every available body here so far in the first half. Woodall, starter step, gave it out to right. Woodall is guarded there by Adrian Coleman. Loose ball picked up by Boone Cookman momentarily. Ricky Johnson had touched it, but Cam Wright guilty of the foul. Ball back to Bethune Cookman. One of the challenges if you're Jamie Dixon and Pitt is coming out of finals week. It's been a week where practice is not a normal schedule. A lot of guys miss court time because of academics. How sharp can you be in a game like this coming out of finals week? So far, a couple uncharacteristic type of turnovers for Pitt. And Malik Jackson misses the three that time. And the foul's going to be called inside on J.J. Moore. His first person. Yeah, how is that as a coach? How challenging can that be? I don't know if fans realize how challenging it can be because you don't always have a full practice. And I don't think that fans realize how much practice time players have to miss from time to time, especially during finals. And some of these players for Pittsburgh moved their finals up about a week and a half ago, but they were still taking them even today on a Saturday. They yeah, had to one, finish them up. Had one player that missed walkthrough today because of it, and it, it hurts you in two ways, Tim. One. The guy that misses is not getting the reps uh, that he needs, but also it hurts in competition and just what you can do. There are days you can't even play five on five in finals week when academics uh, require priority. Robinson brings it up the floor for Pittsburgh. All right, gives it off to Deron Johnson, another one of the bench players. As Jimmy Dixon has had the services of a much deeper bench this season than he did a year ago. Open look, and Robinson, a little bit long on the three. J.J. Moore goes back up. He's fouled, won't hit the shot, though. But he'll go to the line to shoot two. Two concerns for Coach Craig coming into the game for the Wildcats. One was tempo. The zone is helping them with that. The second one was rebounding. Good defensive possession, forced a challenge three. Didn't finish it off with a rebound. J.J. Moore at the line. Fifth team foul for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. They've made their way here from Daytona Beach. Not a bad place to have campus. Five point lead. 17 12. 12 and a half minutes to go in the first. The left hand dribble looks for help. Gets it from Ricky Johnson. Back to Jackson. And underneath Coleman, the turnaround jumper. Dante Taylor flies for the rebound and Pitt runs it back up the floor. Eight minutes gone by in the first half. Pittsburgh with a five point advantage over Bethune Cookman. First ever meeting between these two schools. 
Bethune Cookman, no stranger to the Big East, however, as they are one and 22 against Big East teams. Coleman, the basket there, makes it a three-point game. The only team they beat was University of South Florida. In fact, they played Georgetown the most. They're 0-6 against the Hoyas. Well, when you're Bethune Cookman, you got to play a lot of those games before your conference season to help pay the bills. Taylor ducks around one man. That's Moore, rather, and Moore sticks a long jumper. We talked about it in the opener, Tim. J.J. Moore bringing offense off the bench. He can do it in a lot of ways. Five points for J.J. Moore. And averaging 9.4 a game, so he's halfway to his average. And he's doing it in only about 20 minutes a game, which is uh, extremely productive. Dave Jackson with Moore on top of the key. Of Brandon Stewart. Stewart drives, changes hands, and the rebound by Moore. Robinson looks for an open man, finds Moore, three ball, in and out. And a foul is going to be called on Bethune Cookman's Malik Jackson. That's his second personal. So Jackson commits the foul, 19 14. Pick. Nineteen fourteen, Pitt leading Bethune Cookman here in the first half. Stephen Adams has been a factor in the early going. The guy who's been real tough inside. Well, he's an outstanding offensive rebounder, Tim, and he's finishing around the basket when it's putbacks, and he knows what to do when he gets into that situation right there. As you see the dunk, he's got to improve his back to the basket and his scoring. But he's a young man that could be an elite player in the country off his athleticism by getting to the offensive glass and finishing around the rim and blocking shots. And a two key freshmen for Pitt, the Baby Panthers, Adams and Robinson. And they've each started every game this year. And when you have the floor general Robinson, he certainly doesn't act like a freshman out there. Well, it says freshman, but he plays more like he's about a 10 year NBA vet. Great feel, great pace to his game. Doesn't make a lot of unforced uh, errors. Does a really good job as a freshman playing for Jamie Dixon. Trey Ziegler with the basketball. He's in off the Pittsburgh bench. Ron Johnson, another freshman, along with Robinson. Johnson and Robinson certainly familiar with one another as prep stars, both from the Baltimore area. Ziegler gives it off to Robinson under 10 seconds on the timer, rising for three is Johnson. Put back there by Moore. J.J. Moore picking up some of that stuff. He's got six. Another good defensive possession by Bethune-Cookman, but just not able to finish it off with the rebound put back by J.J. Moore, scoring it another way. And he's got the last six points for Pitt. So they built a seven-point lead. Foul on the floor, a little bumping going on as 
Ricky Johnson was hit by James Robinson on the way by. Just got a little bit of the forearm on him. Substitutions for Bethune Cookman coming back into the game. Paul Scotland and Kevin Dukes. Also, Alex Smith is back in, the senior forward from Jacksonville. Kevin Dukes, second team preseason all MEAC. Had a career high 10 assists against Nebraska Omaha. He has been a floor general. And Moore tied him up. Ball will go back to Bethune Cookman, however, with the alternating possession arrow pointing their way. Bethune Cookman very methodical on offense right now. Again, trying to dictate tempo and slow this game down. They're going to have to make sure they get Coleman some touches. Scotland short on the three ball. Taylor picks up the rebound. Johnson, no look pass to Moore with a two handed flush. So we've seen a pull up, got to the foul line and scored, hit a three, and now finishes in transition. He's pretty much doing it all. He's got a mixed bag and showing all the tricks here tonight. He's a guy who's continuing to earn more and more playing time off the bench. Jimmy Dixon thought the ball was turned over on the sideline, but nobody blew a whistle. And Malik Jackson will score the bucket for Bethune Cookman. Anytime that you're attacking zone, Tim, you want to try to get the ball to the baseline and corners and flatten the zone out and into the middle. Right now, Pittsburgh is just going side to side, hoping to be able to penetrate off the ball screen action. Well, some coaches just like to run their same offense against the zone, whether it's zone or man to man, they think it should work either way. Right now, giving it to J.J. Moore anywhere on the floor is a good idea. That's a good offense right now. He is the first player in the double figures with 10. And he has had 10 consecutive points. But we talked about Ben Story. Really, J.J. Moore is like having a six starter. He's one of those guys that's such a key to their team. Uh, he's so important because of what we've seen so far in this game. He can score the ball in a variety of ways. He can do it in a hurry and create his own shot, which is something that Pittsburgh needs from him. They don't have a lot of guys that can do that. He takes a seat for now. Adams and Zana back in. Lamar Patterson as well. Ziegler guarding Scotland. Scotland trying to cross him over. Skip pass. And up top it goes. Kevin Dukes. A long three. That's good. That was shot from long distance. Such an important player to their team. Terrific shot right there. Team high in assists. Stills leads them in the free throw percentage. Uh, does a lot of things for this between pitching team. Kevin Dukes has been known to be kicked out of the gym 10, 10 30 at night. He is a gym rat, loves to stay and shoot. Says he puts up about 500 or so shots a day. 7.34 to go in the first. Then inside, J.J. Moore brings the crowd to their feet with that one.
on ESPN3. Glad you're with us tonight. Pittsburgh and Bethune Cookman on conference action from the Peterson Events Center. 25 19 pit. And off the bench, J.J. Moore, he's already over his scoring average of 9.4 a game. He's the only guy in double figures in the game. He's got 10. Well, the question isn't what has he done. The question is what hasn't he done. He's had a put back. He's flushed it in transition. He's had a pull up. He's hit a three. He's flashed in the zone. Got in the middle of the zone and made a play, which you have to do against 2-3 zone that Bethune Cookman is playing. Uh, he's been outstanding off the bench. And as we talked about, He's really like a six starter for the Pitt Panthers uh, because of how important he is to their team in the minutes that he plays. The Boone Cookman starters have 12 points. Pitt's bench has 12 points. One of the great strengths of this Pitt team is their bench. It's going to be huge when they get into league play here at the end of this month. Pitt starters with 13 points. So it's <laughs> pretty close. And Zana reaching in. Hands it over to Woodall. Back to Zana. Patterson with a tic-tac-toe, but one pass too many. And Coleman to the rack and score. That's a scorer's move right there. Changed pace when he got in the uh, paint, froze the defense. Nice finish. Four points for Adrian Coleman. I was going to ask you earlier, when you run your offense against the zone, do you run what you normally run, or do you change it up? Well, normally you have a zone offense that you want to run, which is what Jamie Dixon is doing right now. But the big thing is you've got to attack gaps like Lamar Patterson just did for the basket. Get the ball to the baseline and get it to the middle of the floor. That's what puts pressure on the zone defense. What a friendly roll at the home rim. Nice left, too. Six points, the advantage for Pitt. Coleman looking to heat up a little. Coleman, a jump stop. Good. Adams, another rebound. Steven Adams has now pulled down five of those. And Zana underneath. Carried the ball. Turned it over. That's a call you don't see much. I know a couple of seasons ago that was a point of emphasis among college officials, but you just don't see it a lot. Well, you don't see it called very often, and uh, he definitely did, but uh, that's one of those things where everybody, he'll get the turnover, everybody will talk about the plays on him made. Really, and it doesn't happen often, Tim, poor decision by Trey Woodall to give the ball to a big man where he has to make a play like that. Trey Woodall sent down to the floor, an offensive foul is whistle against Alex Smith, and that is his third personal foul. The bonus situation now affecting Pitt. That's the 17 foul for Bethune Cookman. This foul will be shooting. A turnover on the offensive foul. Pitt with the basketball. Just under six minutes to go in the first. Coming up at the half, we'll take a look at the exploits of Pittsburgh's bench this season and the depth that Jimmy Dixon has to work with. So we'll take a look at the news around the Big East concerning basketball. Foul underneath. And the foul is. Goes on Mark Mack, his first. Pittsburgh does an outstanding job of taking care of the basketball as a team. Uh, really separates them. It's a great strength for Jimmy Dixon's program. Uh, a lot of teams have one or two guards, uh, primary ball handlers that take care of the basketball for them. But as a team, Pittsburgh does a really good job of sharing the basketball and making a simple play. It made a huge difference this year in turnover margin. Last year, the turnover margin was 1.6, 269th in the nation. This year, Panthers are forcing more turnovers and getting more transition buckets as a result. And Paul Scotland with a nice basket as he laid it up off the glass. Right now, the, the way this game is going, the, the, the flow of it, the tempo really favors between Cookman. It's giving them a chance to stick around and hang in this game here in the first half. Well, underneath, and again, it's going to be on Mark Mack. His second quick one, the sophomore from Chicago. He'll be shooting the rest of the way to leave Zana from Kaduna, Nigeria. 6'9 junior. To 
increase his strength and speed. He ran the mountains in his home area of Nigeria. He's got five siblings. who have never seen him play live in the U.S. Another Pittsburgh Panther player that comes out, focuses in on his role, does the little things, very few things to hurt you, takes high percentage shots, uh, knows who he is, and is really good in transition, finishing at the rim and on offensive rebounding. Seven point advantage for Pitt with Thun Cookman with the basketball. Switch up. Johnson has to switch back. Jackson tries to pick. Long jumper well short. Devin Dukes didn't catch any rim, and that ball turned over back to Pitt. Not the shot you're looking for if you're Garvel Craig. This is a point in the game. You're down seven. Uh, you're getting close to the last media time out of the half. You want high percentage shots and strong defensive possessions here. Bethune Cookman coming off a loss to Central Florida by 10, 72 62. They came in in a possession of the MEAC Championship a year ago. That ended a tournament championship game. They've had five straight winning seasons, looking for six in a row. Robinson jumper, that's good. Nothing but net. But James Robinson. 32 23, nine point lead. Free throw line. Patterson almost stole that one. Paul Scotland has scored in double figures five times this year for the Wildcats. Comes up short there. Didn't make that shot, but that's what they have to do against the ball screen defense of Pittsburgh. They really need to attack it. Adams' second chance on the alley oop. That was more like the alley oops. And he made good at the end of it. He Moses Malone that one. This is the easy one to get it back. Now he's shooting 50% with another rebound. Well, as a result, he's got seven rebounds. To go along with his eight points and flirting with a double-double here tonight. But Woodall put this one right up over the rim. Well, and I think you see what gives him the potential to be special, uh, to be able to catch and get that ball on the rim. But then look how quickly he gets up to the floor. Good hands, keeps the ball up high, goes straight to the rim. And finishes. Not easy to do for a seven footer, especially a freshman. A tremendous, tremendous athlete. Well, Pitt is on a 6 0 run. It's the third 6 0 run they've had in this half. They've built their largest lead of the game so far at 11 points. 3.34 to go in the first half. And Adams, who does not have a double double yet as a collegiate, looks like he might be on his way tonight. But look at the difference in rebounding 17 to 3 in favor of the Pittsburgh Panthers. Well, you know, the number one concern was tempo uh, for Coach Craig. Number two was the glass, and uh, right now not going very good for the Wildcats. He told us before the game his biggest concern in matchup wise was the bigs. Right, Jackson shoots over one of the bigs, Zana. Zana battling for that long rebound, and Zana will pick up the foul. Ricky Johnson was trying to dribble out of trouble. Uh, Malik Jackson gets an isolation uh, play. Should have driven that basketball. Pitt enjoying their life.
34 23 pit leading Bethune Cookman. Along with Darren Horn, Tim Neverett here at the Peterson Event Center. Well, triple doubles this year. Only four players in college basketball have pulled one off. Adrian Coleman also did it against Weber. 18 points, 15 rebounds, 10 assists. It's hard to do in a college game with 40 minutes of basketball to pull off a triple double, but Coleman has done it. But one thing the Pittsburgh Panthers have done tonight is hold him to only four points. Well, and if you're Gravel Craig right now, you're talking about guys. There's 320 left in the first half. We're within striking distance. Let's get this thing down into single, single digits. And one of the ways they're going to do that is probably try to get Coleman some touches. As you said, only four points so far. Get Adrian Coleman some touches. Try to have some good defensive possessions without giving up offensive rebounds and see if they can't stay within striking distance headed into the half. Adrian Coleman has had double figures in 14 straight games dating back to last season. And the loose ball picked up by Patterson. Shoveled it off to Robinson, stripped, and a foul call on Ricky Johnson. Got a hand on the ball, but also a hand on Robinson. So free throws for James Robinson coming up. Just the opposite of what uh, Coach Craig was looking for, a turnover that leads to transition and a foul. Now they're going, uh, Pittsburgh's going back to the foul line. Tenth team foul, so the plus next to the bonus. The double bonus, which means two free throws each time there is a foul the rest of the way this half. James Robinson, gold medal winner with Team USA in the under-18 competition in Brazil. Prior to enrolling at Pitt. He's got great pedigree from DeMatha High School in Baltimore. And he's already had international competition under his belt. Well, maybe his greatest quality is that he just wins. When you're the all-time leading winner at a place like DeMatha with the tradition and history they have, it's saying an awful lot about you. Robinson. Pitt fans will see plenty of him over the next few years. And he's looking forward to getting going in Big East competition. Lead play just around the corner. Taylor the rebound. 13 point lead. Pitt looking to extend it. As we get closer to the end of the first half of play here tonight. A kickball. So Pitt will maintain possession along the baseline. 2.45 left. You look at the schedule for Pittsburgh, they've got two more games before they get into league play. They'll play Delaware State on the 19th, Kennesaw State on the 23rd, and then they'll host Cincinnati on New Year's Eve. It's a noon game, and that'll be the first Big East contest for Pitt. That's going to be a heck of a matchup to open Big East play. Two very good basketball teams, good veteran perimeter guards, and a lot of size and length in that game. J.J. Moore tried to save it, went out of bounds. Jamie Dixon. Has a seat right now, comfortable with a 13-point lead with 2.32 left in the half. Taylor comes out to get the point guard, Ricky Johnson. Foul is whistled. Foul be called on Trey Woodall. That's his first. And the eighth on the team for Pittsburgh. So Bethune Cookman in the bonus. And shooting free throws will be Mark Mack. He's a sophomore, 6 6 from Chicago, Illinois. This ball picked up by Dante Taylor. Free throws, such an important part of the game, Tim. Phil Cookman just left four points out there. We're missing the front end of two one and ones back to back. And Jay, Jay Moore, the quick turnaround jumper from the baseline. Moore with 12. He is far and away the leading scorer in the game. Phil Cookman has had just two points over the last five minutes plus. And they'll get another opportunity this time with the clock stopped at the free throw line. Follow on James Robinson. 
Thune Cookman had some success with dribble handoff action, looking to turn the corner and get in the paint. They've got to stay aggressive offensively. I know Coach Craig wants to control tempo, but you've got to make sure that you're still attacking offensively, getting that ball in the paint on dribble penetration or post feeds. Alan Stewart's first free throw, no good. And Stewart, the walk on out of Miami. The Thun Cookman trying to build basketball tradition, winning tradition. They've had it in baseball. They've won 11 of the last 12 MEAC baseball titles under Coach Jason Beverly. They've won eight titles in a row. So they're getting used to some success in that athletic department. And they want to have the same on the basketball floor. Well, Gavel Craig is doing a, a tremendous job uh, with his team. As we talked about earlier, they're a little beat up right now, a little shorthanded, but they're going to be good come conference play. Patterson wide open underneath. And Lamar's got a basket. Now 40 to 24. Four points for Lamar Patterson. Stewart missed. Don't let that one go out of bounds. And take the free inbound play with a minute nine to go. One of the things about going against Pittsburgh is they have tremendous length defensively. They do a really good job guarding the three-point line. You've got to get the ball moved from side to side and inside out, or it's going to be really hard to score over that length. 20 seconds on the timer, so Pitt can run it down to half a minute. They find the open man, J.J. Moore underneath. 14 points for J.J. Moore. This time, Mark Mack taking the shot for the Wildcats. Shot clock's dead. Pitt will play for the last shot here. Would you be surprised if J.J. Moore scored it? Not at all. He goes up to set a screen. And Woodall dishes it back to Moore for three. A little bit long, and Dante Taylor fires one up. He is fouled with 1.8 seconds left in the half. At halftime, we'll take a look at the strength of the Pittsburgh bench this season. Also, changes are coming, more changes to the Big East Conference, and big ones as far as basketball is concerned. We'll talk about that. Plus, we'll take a look at the first half highlights and statistics. That's on the way at halftime. You know, in talking to Jamie Dixon earlier today at their practice, Tim, one of the things he was excited about was the production of Dante Taylor. Uh, he's been finishing better around the basket and showing more consistency. Uh, and he's doing a really good job on those weak side boards. He is a big man and a load on that weak side when he gets in there and uses that body. And he's at the foul line right now because of that. Second shot good for Taylor. 20 point lead, their largest. And that is it for the half. 44 24. Pitt ends the half. The last five minutes and five seconds, they went on a 15 to 1 run. And a big reason they're 20 points ahead at the break. We're at the half in Pittsburgh. The Panthers on top of Bethune Cookman.
Welcome back to Holiday Hoops on ESPN3. We're at the Peterson Event Center at the half. Bethune Cookman and the Pittsburgh Panthers. And Darren, when this season began, one of the questions about Pittsburgh was how would their bench perform? Well, some of those questions have been answered early in the season for the first 10 games. Freshman Deron Johnson's been a factor from time to time. Well, the freshman from Baltimore is long and athletic. He makes open threes. He can finish in transition, and he has tremendous length. That's going to lead to him being a lockdown defender as his career moves forward. As Deron Johnson continues to develop, they're getting contributions from a guy who's been around a bit. Transfer Trey Ziegler from Central Michigan. Veteran guard brings a lot of poise and confidence off the bench. He's instant offense with mid-range and transition finishes. Getting a production from the post has been a key off the bench. Dante Taylor, one of those guys getting it done. You can't teach Big Ten. He brings a big body uh, to the floor for the Pittsburgh Panthers. He's finishing better around the rim. Jamie Dixon's been very pleased with that. And he does one thing that's a staple in the Pitt Panther program, and that is he does a tremendous job on the offensive glass. Dante Taylor can put him down. A guy who was one of the first off the bench is Cam Wright. And Wright has been a terrific defender, turning defense into offense. The first word that comes to mind is toughness. He brings that gritty, tough defensive style that makes Pittsburgh so good. But he can score the basketball, too. Not a deep-range shooter, but good off the dribble and around the basket because of his strength. Well, Cam Wright certainly has had his nights so far. Looks forward to many more. J.J. Moore is the top scorer off the bench for Pittsburgh. I love this guy. When you look at his numbers per minute played, he's incredibly productive. He's athletic. A key for him is that he can create his own shot with his athleticism and score the ball in a variety of ways. That's something that Pittsburgh definitely needs. J.J. Moore, one of the leaders, one of the more athletic players for the Pittsburgh Panthers as well. When we look at some of the numbers of these guys coming off the bench, averaging nearly 10 points a game for Moore, Taylor five points in 17, almost 18 minutes, Ziegler right, Ron Johnson able to score. So the bench players getting the ball in the basket. Well, what you want from your bench is production without negatives. And Jamie Dixon is getting that. You look at that number on the bottom of the screen, huge advantage for Pittsburgh in games that they're getting this kind of production from their bench. It's bench outscoring the opposition 264 to 124. When we come back, we'll talk about the future configuration of the Big East Conference. Pittsburgh a 20-point lead at the half, 44-24 over Bethune-Cookman. Alongside Darren Horn, I'm Tim Neverett, and as we look ahead now to what the Big East Conference might be, the news today regarding the seven schools that will uh, work their way toward 
pulling out of the Big East Conference. DePaul, Georgetown, Marquette, Providence, St. John, Seton Hall, Villanova. They released this statement, the presidents collectively of those schools. Earlier today, we voted unanimously to pursue an orderly evolution to a foundation of basketball schools that honors the history and tradition on which the Big East was established. We look forward to building this new foundation with an emphasis on elite competition and a commitment to the development of our students engaged in intercollegiate athletics. Big East Conference office issuing a response. Commissioner Michael Oresco and uh, his response. Uh, the membership recognizes the seven schools' contributions over the long distinguished history of the Big East. The 13 members of the conference are confident and united regarding our collective future. We have a variety of options and are looking forward with great partnership Blue Jelly and optimism. So th this is a, a big deal right here when you have seven schools. They're non-FBS football playing schools that are going to pull out and, and perhaps form their own conference. Uh, what does this mean for college basketball, the Big East in particular? Well, the important thing is that it was done for basketball reasons. Those basketball schools, as the statement said, trying to protect uh, their tradition, their history, their programs. Everything else is being driven by football right now. But uh, interesting to see basketball schools banding together and trying to preserve uh, their conference. And the way that the Big East will sit, they'll still have football-only playing schools such as new additions, uh, for example, Boise State and San Diego State, which certainly geographically are, are not necessarily in the East, but they'll compete in the Big East. Uh, and the basketball, you know, how is it, how is it hurt by this? Well, I think ultimately we don't know the answer to that. There's been so much change uh, here in the last several months especially. Uh, I think they hope long term it's going to keep them as a strong basketball league in the big picture, which means NCAA tournament. So more changes in collegiate athletics, more changes in the Big East coming. Stats and highlights coming up from Pittsburgh. Getting closer to the start of the second half here at the Peterson Event Center, 44-24 lead for the Pittsburgh Panthers who are making their way back out on the floor. And in the first half, Darren, we saw a team that came out and seemed to press the issue defensively in Pittsburgh. They turned that into some offense. Bethune Cookman used the three-pointer to hang in there. Well, we knew it was going to be guards versus size early on. Bethune Cookman hung around for a while, the size too much, and J.J. Moore too much to give the Panthers a 20-point lead at half. Take a look at the first half highlights. Bethune Cookman got things rolling. They were looking for it. Adrian Coleman 
Coleman started off strong, but didn't have too many points, only four first half points. Well, the Wildcats had success when they controlled tempo, but were aggressive in how they played when they attacked the basket in transition and from the perimeter. There you see the attack about Scotland getting in the paint. And for Pitt to leave Zana had a great start early on. Making the short jumpers, he was good inside as well. We knew the bigs were going to be an impact in this game, a big concern. Zana with the finishes, Steven Adams doing again what he does best on the offensive class and getting the putbacks. And Adams flirting with a double-double at this point, seven rebounds, eight points, but J.J. Moore off the bench, the game's leading scorer with 14. Well, J.J. had it his way in the first half, Tim. He scored it every way imaginable, was a huge spark off the bench, and the reason this lead is as big as it is. We'll take a look at the first half numbers when we return and start the second half. 44-24, Pitt leading Bethune football. Hoops on ESPN3 is presented by Allstate. And we're glad you're with us from the Peterson Event Center with Darren Horn. I'm Tim Nevert. Second half action just beginning. Pittsburgh with a 20-point lead. And Lamar Patterson will trigger the inbound to start the second half. And we are underway in half number two. Well, what does Bethune Cookman need to do? What do you suppose Ravel Craig told his team at the half? Well, I think the big thing is take care of the basketball make sure you get shots on the offensive end and defensively their zone's been good to them Tim but they got to finish off possessions having a hard time keeping Pittsburgh off the offensive glass. Anderson swings it to the corner for Woodall. Adams tries a long jumper. He won't try a lot of those but that one came up short. Patterson, he stutter step. The ball moving around the baseline. A foul ultimately called. Take a look at the first half statistics. 16 out of 27 from the field for Pitt. 8 for 23 for Bethune Cookman. And the paint points, the rebounds, and the bench points all in favor of Pitt. Well, that's the huge difference, and there's huge differences in each area. Uh, this Pittsburgh bench so strong, going to be so important for them as they get into Big East play here at the end of the month. Well, Pitt receiving votes, not yet ranked in the top 25. And asked Jamie Dixon this morning if that bothers him at this point in time, considering the fact they're nine and one. He said, "Well, we beat Michigan, we're ranked." He said that was the only loss. He said that it doesn't bother him at this time of the year. He said if you're good enough to be ranked, you'll get ranked. 
Well, that's really what it's all about, is uh, how you get better as the year goes on and uh, where you are in March, and his teams have been outstanding over the years of that. A lot of teams have a different identity in November and December than they do in February and March. They just evolve over time, don't they? Well, it's a process. Uh, it's about getting better and trying to be your best uh, come tournament time. Good shot missed, taken by the point guard, Kevin Dukes. Pitt running the other way with it. Robinson going to the basket. Now he's bucket. That's two for Robinson. He's got six. Good effort by Alex Smith on that offensive rebound for Bethune Cookman, but he tried to dribble a loose ball. You can't do that, Tim. You got to pick them up when they're loose. Leads to a Pittsburgh layup on the other end. Boris Bryant, we saw early in the game. We haven't seen him much late in the first half, and Bryant well short on the shot. And Woodall pushed out of bounds, but he thought he was pushed, but basically the, the call was as they separated, Woodall stepped out of bounds, so the ball goes back to Bethune Cookman. I think Bethune Cookman's really got to look to try to get Adrian Coleman involved as much as possible early in this half. Five second violation, so ball given right back to Pitt. Well, the second half scoring for Pittsburgh's been good. 357 to 247. 110 more points in the second half of the first 10 games. Ball tipped around, and Bethune Cookman's got it. Adrian Coleman with it. Now, Coleman's a guy who can really shoot. Foul is called on. Lamar Patterson, but on Adrian Coleman against Stetson, he went 13 for 14 from the field for 29 points. That's a 92.9 percent shooting percentage. That's the highest shooting percentage in a single game in the NCAA over the last four years. Well, one of the things that's impressive about Adrian Coleman is that he scores big numbers and he produces a lot every night, but he's not what I call a high volume guy, Tim. Doesn't need a lot of shots to do it. Very efficient in how he plays. Kevin Dukes guarded by Robinson. Up top it goes to Bryant. DeVoris Bryant picks it out. No shot there for Dukes. We're talking about shooting percentage. Dukes is one guy who shoots the ball well. Also, Alex Smith, who we haven't seen shoot a lot. He wears number two. And just rebounded over by Woodall. And Patterson. No look to Adams for the flush. And Stephen Adams in double figures with ten points to go along with eight rebounds. And those points in the paint just keep adding up for Pittsburgh. It just looks so easy when you're that big. Adams fronting Alex Smith. Now he's doubled. Now the foul's going to be called. And will it be on Smith or Zana? Called on Smith. Or rather Adams. So those are the kind of plays that Steven Adams is going to improve on. You see him whether he got him or not. Pittsburgh fans don't seem real happy about it, but he came down with his arm. He's got to learn to stay straight up with that and make sure that they try to finish over top of him because he's got good size and he's got tremendous length. 52-25, Adams picking up the personal foul. Six of his brothers played for the New Zealand national team, and all of them 6'10 or taller. He comes from a rather large family. Can you imagine the grocery bill at that house, Tim? How about the family reunion? He's trying to feed the, everybody. He was the third seven-footer to play for Pitt. The last was Aaron Gray, who played from 2003 to 2007. Woodall finally picks it up. Lobs it for Adams, and Stephen Adams with 12. Pittsburgh running more of their man-to-man -man type action right now. Single doubles coming out of the bottom for the shooter, trying to hit the slip man against his own. Forced a couple passes in there so far. And since the 15-minute mark of the first half, 
pit is on a 20. To holiday hoops on ESPN 3 54 26. Happy holidays to everybody. That season. AP Top 25, the big story. The Butler Bulldogs in overtime. 86 for the number one team in the country. 88 for Butler. What a game for Butler. What a story as they knock off the powerful Hoosiers. Michigan hosts West Virginia later tonight. I'm going on just getting ready to tip off. Syracuse leading Canisius at the half. And Louisville on top of Memphis today. 87 to 78. But how about that Butler Indiana game? Tremendous college basketball game. Uh, so much fun to watch. Two mentally tough, extremely well coached teams going at it. Uh, it's one of those games where the team that had the ball last. Uh, was going to win, and that's exactly what happened. Bethune Cookman has not scored a basket over the last nine minutes and 35 seconds, dating back to the toward the end of the first half, and that ends that run of close to 10 minutes. 5:21 was on the clock in the first half when they scored their last basket. It's a long drought. Woodall bounce pass to Adams. He's got a new career high, 14 points. He's caught up to J.J. Moore. He had scored 13 in the game twice, but now Adams with a new career mark of 14. But granted, it's a short career. This is the 11th game. <laughs> I suspect he'll have a, a number of games like this. Well, I'm headed towards a double-double if he keeps rebounding the basketball. He needs two more rebounds to get a double-double. He's got eight. Coleman, left-handed, scores. Six points for Adrian Coleman. You know, some guys can just score the basketball, Tim. They have a knack uh, for getting to the basket, finishing with both hands. You saw Coleman on the spin, uh, the little hesitation, kind of pump fake uh, to clear himself up, and then the left-hand finish right there. Nice move. Woodall trying to put it on the baseline. Got Zana, and Zana scores two. Zana now with nine. 58-30. Pitt just much deeper. That's one of the things that we talked to Coach Craig about with Bethune Cookman saying that at his level, if you miss one or two guys, it really hurts. You've got to have some depth. Good stroke in the basket by Javoris Bryant. 58-32. Rosanna. Cam right now, Trey Woodall. Long three by Patterson. Lamar Patterson in the double figures. And he now has 11 points. And it's 61-32, 29-point lead. 
You know, I really think if Pittsburgh shoots the ball well from the perimeter and has a guy like a J.J. Moore step up and create some offense for himself, they're going to be a really tough out come March because of the way they defend, because of their length, and because of what we've talked about and seen tonight, their depth. Holman trying to get to the basket, but fouled beforehand. And committing the personal foul, Trey Woodall. Second foul on Woodall, the team's third here in the second. Substitutions now for Jamie Dixon. Zion Patterson and Adams will sit. Moore, Johnson, and Taylor come in. You go to the bench, you come in with J.J. Moore, who's a tremendous scorer, a starter on uh, most teams. Dante Taylor, former McDonald's All-American senior, and a talented freshman like Duran Johnson. Pretty strong bench. And Stewart, the walk-on. Delivers the pass inside Alex Smith. Outside Bryant. And to find... Brandon Stewart again, but another foul is called on Pittsburgh. Ron Johnson whistled for that one. That'll be his first. Woodall will get a seat. And James Robinson will come back in. Woodall will spell Robinson at the point from time to time. All Scotland. It's the ball to Bryant. Cut off by Moore. And Dante Taylor is called for a blocking foul. On the perimeter. Nice job by Scotland right there attacking the ball screen defender when the big steps out. Did a good job of lowering his shoulder and trying to attack him. Draws the foul. One thing Bethune Cookman we thought we'd try to do is really slow it up, try to keep the ball away from Pitt. Pull up. And that one's good. Javoris Bryant with a basket. And Bryant now with six. So three players with six points for Bethune Cookman. Bryant, Smith, and Coleman. Well, this is a team that's going to be good when they get in MEAC play. They've got a lot of veterans on their team, Tim. They've got several guys that can create a shot and score the basketball. After going 10 minutes with no field goals, Bethune Cookman's hit the last four in the game. This is a game of runs and droughts. You just can't have droughts like they had. Taylor reverses his field, a little baby hook shot, produces two points. Dante Taylor finishing better at the rim. Jamie Dixon really likes his progress. Uh, the more that he can do that, uh, the greater impact he's going to have because he's rebounding the basketball well and he's a big body for him defensively. Now Pitt in the second half, field goal wise, nine out of ten, four for seven for Bethune Cookman. And a steal on a bad pass to Ron Johnson, one on one against Stewart. Johnson's going to score, and he'll go to the line for a possible three point play as Stewart fouled it. 11 16 to go in the game. It's a 65 34 lead. The freshman, Deron Johnson, will go to the line when we come back.
career high 14 points for Steven Adams to go along with eight rebounds and a seven foot freshman out of New Zealand started off early being a force on the inside he's just continued down that path long and athletic terrific hands around the basket gets off his feet quickly finishes well at the rim he's going to be an outstanding player Scoring to the basket, hitting the face-up jump shot, those kind of things. He's going to develop that. He'll get better. Uh, but the athleticism that he brings, both on the offensive end and defensively, especially around the rim when it comes to offensive rebounding and blocking shots, uh, he's impacting right now doing that. And Ron Johnson, who was fouled just prior to the break, was fouled by Brandon Stewart. Long in the free throw. Follows the shot, gets his own board. Still battling in the corner there. Wide open is more for the jam. Right over Mark Mack. He posterized him. And it's a 16-point effort off the bench for J.J. Moore. Well, he's been outstanding tonight. There really isn't any, anything he hasn't done. Uh, been a real spark for Pittsburgh. We'll talk about second-half shooting percentage. Pittsburgh 11 of 12 from the field. <laughs> Ball out of bounds and... It will remain in possession of Bethune Cookman. How about the find by Duran Johnson there? He's got pressure in the corner. He's trapped. He uh, does the only thing he really can do. He spins to the baseline, uh, which opens up a passing lane for him. Desperation shot got the roll. So Scotland adds two more to his total. Scotland now with seven. He is the leading Wildcat scorer. Bethune Cookman, as we talked about, much better offensively here, especially in the last few minutes. Uh, but uh, Pittsburgh shooting 90% for the half. It's tough to beat a team when they are shooting 90%. Now Moore tries a long one. And an offensive foul as Deron Johnson pull, uh, pushed off. That'll be a turnover for Pittsburgh. Second foul on Johnson. Uh, if you're Jamie Dixon, you don't mind that foul. That's a freshman going aggressive to the offensive glass. And one of the things that he can do for them is get into the offensive glass, into those lanes, and use his length and athleticism from the wing. Uh, Johnson was here at Pitt last year as a red shirt. Still has this year and three more years of eligibility to follow. Stewart guarded by Johnson. Stewart's going to go to the basket, and Johnson picks up another foul. That's his third. Well, that's an area that uh, Jamie Dixon and his staff want to see Duran Johnson prove in. Being a lockdown defender, he's got the length and the athleticism to do it. Uh, he needs the discipline and the focus that comes from uh, repetition. You can't make him older faster. Uh, correction on the foul total for Johnson. That's actually his fourth. He's only got one more to play with. Cam Wright's going to get up off the bench for Pitt. And he will come in for Johnson. And Johnson will sit down with four fouls. Brandon Stewart. It's the second free throw. It's a 67 37, a 30 point lead for Pitt. Bounds to Robinson and Boone Cookman picking up in the backcourt, changing up their defense. And settle back into his own. Well, this is a point in a game like this when it's 30 points that both coaches are trying to make sure their team stays focused and trying to get better at the things they need to get better at as they head into conference play when games are going to be close. Scotland trying to get around Robinson, and that pass intercepted. A three-on-one led by Ziegler. Dumps it off to Dante Taylor. Well, the only thing worse than a lob ball turnover is a lob ball turnover in transition. Always leads to a basket on the other end. Nice finish by Taylor. Ziegler, a good dish to the middle. There's Scotland. Going up a teardrop. Rebound by Mack. And he is fouled on the way up. Mark Mack will go to the line. A foul on Dante Taylor. It's his third. It's a 
be Mac's third trip to the foul line because of what he's done on the offensive glass. He's 0 for 2 on the front end of bonus in the first half. Let's see if he can knock one down here. Mark Mack is a freshman last year, appeared in 27 games. Two points in his last game. Adams checking back in. Bethune Cookman's got some Pittsburgh connections. One of their famous alums, a guy who worked for many, many years in the athletic department, of course, was a basketball coach and a football coach, Cy McLaren. Back in 1953, was a 26th round draft choice of the Pittsburgh Steelers. 26th round, ended up as a Pro Bowler. But he served Bethune Cookman as football coach, basketball coach, athletic director. And now is an associate athletic director. How long do you think a 26 round draft took? That's uh, yeah. not as many franchises then. <laughs> well, they weren't on TV back then. That's right. Probably not as long as you think. Cook trying to work the ball around the perimeter. Ziegler charges. There's one up there, can't get it to go. Fresh shot clock. Now Robinson takes it to the basket, no good. And they put that there for Zana. To lead Zana into double figures with 11. He's the fourth Panther in double figures now, led by J.J. Moore's 16 points. Stephen Adams, 14. Patterson and Zana both with 11. Balance is a key word for the Pittsburgh Panthers this year. A lot of different guys that can contribute as they get into Big East play. If you think they're going to need a J.J. Moore type performance from at least one of those guys uh, every night, somebody that put some real numbers on the board. Stephen Adams with his ninth rebound. He's one rebound away from a double-double. It's the guys on the inside who have been getting it done for Pitt tonight, including Dante Taylor. It's 71-38 lead for Pitt. 751 remaining in this one. The big guys inside, including Talib Sana, have had themselves a night. It's been a bad matchup for Bethune Cookman to try to handle Pitt's bigs. Talib Sana's a workhorse for the Panthers, Tim. He does all the little things. You gotta love guys that can score the ball for you, and you don't have to run plays for them. He gets them in transition. He gets them on the offensive glass. He gets them by getting down in there and getting lost behind the defense on defense on the uh, Dribble penetration. I love the way he plays. 11 points, three rebounds for Talib Zana. Junior from Nigeria, 6'9. Very good student. In fact, I believe he was one of the pit players that missed shoot around today. He had a final on a Saturday on a game day. Kevin Dukes with a basketball for Bethune Cookman. Now you get in this situation if you're Bethune Cookman. 
You're just trying to win possession after possession now? You're really trying to focus on one possession at a time. Hey, let's make sure we can get the shot we want. And defensively, don't give up anything easy and make sure we finish off defensive possessions with a rebound because that's what they're, they're going to need to do consistently as they get into league play and play teams more like themselves. Duke's a long three. And Zana picks up the board. Ziegler running down court with it. Ziegler. It's a pack to Zana. And Robinson will reset the offense. Dane Cookman, four and seven coming into this game. Pitt nine and one. Shot clock is down to six. Ziegler finds an open man. That's right. He lets it fly. Adams, the rebound of the putback. Double, double for Steven Adams, the first of his career. Ten rebounds to go along with 16 points. And half of those are on the offensive glass. And the good thing about that for Pittsburgh, a lot of times they lead the baskets for him. Well, Adams will put the ball in the basket and grab him off the glass and count him up later on. Almost had a block there, too, on the shot. Zana with another rebound. Find Ziegler. With Robinson coming down to the six minute mark remaining in the game. After this, two more non conference games for Pittsburgh Delaware State and Kennesaw State on the 19th and 23rd, respectively. They'll open conference play against Cincinnati on New Year's Eve at noon. And a three ball by Robinson. It's at 76 38. Robinson with nine points. Good patience and movement that time by Pittsburgh. Robinson, good job being ready to shoot. Adams got a hand in there to force the loose ball. The ball is quiet, gets it back to the point guard, Ricky Johnson. Johnson out of Akron, Ohio, from St. Vincent and St. Mary's High School. Same one where LeBron James went to school. Coach Craig's high on Ricky Johnson says he's probably the toughest player uh, in terms of uh, having mental toughness and just competing on every possession and everything he does. Well, Craig from Farrell, Pennsylvania. He was a freshman in high school when Sean Miller was a senior. Got to know him. Had some friends who were athletes here at Pitt, including football players, and would come to Pitt to watch them play occasionally. Home in Daytona Beach, right near the campus of Bethune Cookman. Pitt doesn't appear to be in any hurry at this point in time. Running the shot clock down, it's down to five. And right, will throw it up there and got it blocked. Malik Jackson not only blocked the shot but ended up on top of right. Good example of why you're always trying to execute and get better in these games. You see the drive by Cam right there. And they're going to call a foul. There's not two seconds on the shot clock. Jackson whistled for the foul. And looked like Jackson's teammate, Brandon Stewart, got the worst of the whole thing. <laughs> get up on his back. Anytime in basketball, I think you'll agree, when you end up looking at the lights, on the ceiling, something good didn't just happen to you. Not unless you set up for a charge and you knew it was coming. It usually means you got surprised. Ricky Johnson off to Malik Jackson. He lays one off the glass and Titter rips it down. Pass ahead, Johnson. And Deron Johnson scores two. Nice rebound and outlet by Taylor. Johnson's really good in transition when he gets in the open floor like that. That's four points for Johnson. 79-38 lead. Taylor, another rebound. Dante Taylor has seven of those. Ziegler off the glass, and that is good. And Pittsburgh in a runaway tonight, 81. 38. The 
The shooting percentage for Bethune Cookman, 33.3 percent in the game. Certainly something that'll be circled, a, a number that'll be circled after this game and looked at. But certainly something that Bethune Cookman not happy with. Pittsburgh. You Just to put things in perspective, Pittsburgh has 37 second half points. Bethune Cookman has 38 points in the game. 341 to go. It's 81 38. Our All State good hands play of the game. Steven Adams. Pretty good hands right there. Having himself a career night. 16 points, 10 rebounds. His first career double double. He's had good hands all over the place on the glass and finishing at the rim. Uh, you're going to see him continue to get better as the year goes on. Pittsburgh looking for their 10th victory. They're three minutes and change away from that. When you get number 10, is it a, a kind of a, a small sigh of relief? Because one of those major goals in college basketball is get to have a 20 win season. You get to be halfway there and still two more games to go in non conference play. Well, you know, conference play. It's going to be tough night in and night out. It's hard to get a win every night in league play. Uh, so the more you can rack up a non-conference play, uh, the better chance you have of getting to that number. At the line is Ricky Johnson. And Johnson concentrating on the rim. It's good for Johnson. One of the things that will help Nathan Cookman as they get into MEAC play is going to be that they do do a good job of getting to the foul line. There's a goal here tonight to get to the line and score with the clock stopped. And they've done it again. So 81 40. 41 point lead for Pittsburgh. One of the things about the heritage of the school, Nathan Cookman, there in the cloud, Nathan. And the founders was a key figure in the development of the civil rights movement. She helped pave the way for Jackie Robinson to play his first spring training game in Daytona Beach in 1946, the year before he broke the major league color barrier. So a pretty significant contribution, not only to athletics, but to civil rights. Underneath, here's Wright, lays it in. Damn Wright with a basket. Now Bethune Cookman in a stretch of better than seven and a half minutes without a field goal. They did have a 10 minute drought earlier in the game. Under three minutes left. No good on the shot taken by Kevin Dukes. One way you get some easy baskets when the shots aren't falling is to get to the offensive glass. But Boone Cookman, not a lot of offensive rebounds tonight. This is the first ever meeting between Pitt and Bethune Cookman. J.J. Moore, 18 points for him. His career high is 21. He's getting a little closer to it. Hey, 
Rebound by Taylor. Taylor has more rebounds than points. Nine rebounds and six points. They gave him that one. He's now got double figure rebounds. That's a good sign for the Panthers. Well, they gave it to him. He's got 10 rebounds. Adams with 10 rebounds and also double figures in one of those categories. Trayvon Woodall might have been overlooked. 10 assists tonight. Four players in double figures for Pittsburgh. Ziegler uses the glass and scores. 87-40. 90 seconds to go. Over these next few weeks, Jamie Dixon's really going to be locked in on making sure that his defense and his rebounding is what he wants it to be before that Cincinnati matchup to open Big East play. Talking to him earlier today, that's something that he really felt like they wanted to focus on. Uh, they feel like they've got the balance and the depth we've been talking about offensively, and they're going to share the ball uh, in a way that will allow them to score. I really want to make sure they're good in defense and rebounding. Dante Taylor now with 11 rebounds. A minute to go. Pitt Panthers well on their way to their 10th victory of the season. Bethune Cookman will end up dropping to 4 and 8. They're trying to work as much time as they can, but Wright will go to the basket. He got a good roll. And it's an 89 40 game. The highest point total for Pitt so far this year 86 points. Prior to tonight, that was against Fordham on the 12th of November. And it's going to do it. No shot clock. There's 22 seconds left. And the Pittsburgh Panthers with a dominant second half. They won the battle on the boards. They won the battle in the paint. They won the battle on the bench. And they will win this game. My final score of 89 to 40. Pittsburgh is now 172 and 19 all time in this building. That is some dominance. 89 to 40, the final score. First career double double for Stephen Adams. We're back to wrap it up from Pittsburgh in a moment. on ESPN3. You're with us here from Pittsburgh where the Panthers have defeated Bethune Cookman 89 to 40. The largest margin of victory by Pitt in this building. 172 wins in this building to 19 losses and a 49 point margin of victory. Pitt outscored Bethune Cookman over the last 25 and a half minutes 61 to 17. Well they did it with their bigs and they did it on the boards. Uh, tremendous production in those areas and as we talked about throughout the night bench was outstanding. You see Trey Woodall climbing the list of 10 plus assist games. 
For Darren Horn, I'm Tim Neverett saying so long from Pittsburgh, where the final score is 89 to 40. Pittsburgh wins it. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.